right. Welcome back to PolPolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you go on Spotify. The main thing I need y'all go on YouTube, because all these videos are going to be on YouTube. This interview is on YouTube, so make sure y'all subscribe. One, two, oh. one, two, I'm placed to be with the homie, Stephen Darnell. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to do the best I can to survive during this quarantine. You know, as you can see, I'm, you know, my beard is getting a bit thick. But I'm surviving, man, you know, just trying to adapt to the change in the world right now. You know what I mean? So what changed for you right now? Uh, the fact that, you know, <clears throat> Just, just my regular routine of just being able to go to the studio and, you know, doing, uh, you know, getting out doing shows and being not being able to be out and network and stuff like that, you know, just with that, with the shutdown and lockdown and everything and quarantine of everything, it's kind of, it kind of put a halt on that as far as just physically, you know, being out and you know being able to talk to people. Like we can do like how we do it, we you know still virtual and, um, you know, as far as social media, but. I wasn't one of them artists, you know, fortunate enough to have a, like a, a, a in home setup, you know, so I can record. I always went to the studio, so so now I've just been, you know, writing material, just hacking, writing a lot, and you know, coming up with a lot of ideas. So when the quarantine lives, I can, you know, I get back in the studio and just record. Well, it sound like the next move is getting your own little setup. That's what it sounds like yeah. you should be doing anyway, because just in case it happened again. No, no, no. You you absolutely right, and it's funny that I was I was really gearing up to do that. You know, if anything, I was gonna have a setup to where I could like lay down ideas and you know scratch work and stuff like that. Um, I was you know I was getting I was getting ready to do that. So you know, and this happened is kind of like derailed my plans on that. But it definitely showed me that, um, you know, got an ideal or something, just jump right on that and just make it happen. You never know what, you know, you never know what tomorrow holds. So I'm going to definitely have a setup, man. I, I feel like, I feel like I've been, uh, I've been planning it for, for a minute. So definitely going to be trying to put it in place when, uh, when everything is, when everything getting back to moving again. I ain't see you in no versus battle yet. What's up? Versus who? Who gonna be versus? <laughs> I don't know. I was I was thinking in my head. I think I got somebody for you, but he wrong. Yeah. So it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> but I was thinking, uh, that's the homie. I don't know if you know his name, John Sir Lee. But he nice. No, I think that'll nah. be a good one. No, nah, no, nah, I never heard him, man. But you know, I'm pretty sure if you put if you put the stamp on him, yeah, he gotta be a good artist. You know. I mean, I, I definitely think the versus thing is is um is super dope, man. I think I definitely think it's healthy competition. Um, it definitely gives it definitely give artists a chance to show off their catalog, you know, uh, to the world. I'm saying you ready? I'm saying I can set you up with somebody. I, you want an opponent? I can give you an opponent. That's what I'm saying. What's up? You want somebody? Man, hey, you know, do it. <laughs> oh yeah, just get give me give me a little bit. I'll be ready. You know, I I've been working. I've been working on something. You know what I mean? Once I I got a guy catalog, you know what I mean? I can, yeah, because they going you, you 20 can, songs deep, most of let, them. Yeah, you can let the people, uh, you know, you can set that up and let the people see, you know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely what, what I got going on. I mean, I ain't scared, man. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, you know what I mean? We ain't, you know, we, we bring it, man. It ain't, ain't no scared. You know what I'm saying? I think I can find somebody for you. I'm trying to see if that's what you mm -hmm. want. Cause I'm saying it, it might be nice, though. I'm going to make sure they y'all both cool because then, Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna help both of y'all out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, absolutely, man. I would, I would take it as a slap in the face if you would pit me up against somebody that's not nice, like you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> cause I would, I would feel like, you know, this is the level in which you see me. You know what I'm saying? I who would want... you, if you can name, if you can have anybody you wanted to go against, anybody, <laughs> who would you, who would be your dream opponent anyway for them versus battles? Who would you want to go against? They can be signed, like you can name anybody. Dead, it's, live, whoever. <laughs> it's difficult, you know, when you when you it's different. It's a different when you think about, you know, the versus battle that they do now. Because, uh -huh. you know, the versus battle that Timbaland and, and Swiss Beats put on are versus battle between artists uh, uh, you know, who are in the same realm as far as resources and you know what I mean, um, 
the capital that's put behind them. So mm. when you think about being an artist and you think about creating, there's a lot of things that definitely go into place um, as far as like, uh, you can have you can have ideas that's more easily implicated when you got the resources to do so. You know what I mean? You think about most of the artists that's been in versus battle that have made these hits, you know, they've they've had the resources and the money to, you know, have all the equipment, have the best, you know, team of people working with them, you know, being in the best studios and stuff like that. So it kind of be lopsided if you know. I, would pick myself up <laughs> nah, I guess like um, because I just Creative. one of my these uh, these homies I just interviewed they uh they was independent they did like been independent people doing it too I've been seeing it. Yeah, independent yeah independent people I've been seeing it, like a lot of independent people doing it. Yeah, but you know, independent don't necessarily mean like you know less talented, but you know, a lot of independent people do have you know the money and the resources to, you know, put certain records together that, um, you know, unsigned artists don't necessarily have the resources or money, to, you know, to put it right. We got ideas and we got the creativity and the talent. It's just that, you know, like, okay, it definitely certain elements that people add to records that, you know, take records to, to another level, you know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, just being able to, employ certain people to come in and do certain things on records or you know uh get a get an idea or you know you know put your heads together because a lot of these artists they do verses and they talented you know at the end of the day but they work with a team of people like you know you see they face but it's a team of people behind them that come together to help you know make these records what they is that the, the final result of, of these records you know what i'm saying so you know, when you hear my records, you know, it's all me. I, I don't have a team of people behind me, you know, helping me put my records together. It's just, you know, it's all my original thoughts and ideas and whatever I put together and present to the world. Like, just know that came from, you know, the $500 budget <laughs> that I was working with, you know, because, you know what I'm saying? It's a, not making excuses, but you would definitely see you can definitely see the uh, the level in a record when an artist levels up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like, but honestly, man, you know, I'm not afraid. You know, you can put me up against any artist and and, hear, and see my original thought and be like, oh yeah, this guy is he can hold his own. You know what I'm saying? So what uh, you been? I saw you. You have been dropping a lot of stuff. So just talk about all the stuff you've been coming out with since. Yeah. I think last interview was like three years ago. Right, right. Two, three years ago. Yeah. That was yeah. two years ago. <laughs> yeah, two. You know, it's crazy, man. It's it's like every time I do an interview, a lot of people say, "Man, you've been dropping a lot of stuff." Man. <clears throat> it's funny. Like I don't even I don't even realize, you know, that I'm like. It's a lot of content, but I have I I have said certain things to my I have looked in the mirror as an artist and said certain things to myself that changed my work ethic. You know what I mean? It's certain documentaries that I watch. It's certain art artists that I look look up to that I watch that um, changed my work ethic. And I just had to um, I had to I had to stand up and look myself in the face and tell myself legit like you know. You want this, but you know, truth be told, you're not working hard enough. You know, I didn't feel like I was working hard enough as an artist to, you know, better myself to reach the level in which I wanted to reach. So I had to like, I had to push myself. I had to go. I had to go in and, you know, I had to dig deep and pull some stuff out of myself that I wasn't pulling out before as an, as an artist. You know what I'm saying? So that that really put me in that position to, you know, create this content and boom, boom, boom. You know, um, also I would say that you can get in a space as an artist where, you know, marketing wise and everything has to be, has to line up. But, you know, at this day and age as an artist in 2020, it's like really no rules, man. Like, all the rules and regulations and you know artists you see artists every day dropping projects you don't even know they've been working on you know what i'm saying 
it's like, oh, here you go. Check this out. You didn't know he was even recording. And I, I think that's the mode I got into. I was like, man, you know, I'm just going to drop it. I'm just going to record it, put it together, package it up nice and neat. Boom. On to the next. And that's the mindset I just been having. Well, you've been releasing it because I know now, like, it's not really on, um, like, those mixtape websites and, like, yep. blogs. They ain't really the movie no more. It's now you got to put yep. your stuff on the Spotify, on the playlist. So yeah, you my brother, stuff playing you smart. Playlist? Yeah, you, you smart. You smart, bro. You, you definitely smart, brother, man. And I always respect that about you, the fact that you you always you always keep up with – um. You always keep up with the times. Like you always understand what's going on. And you always you always been observing. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, I like the mixtape sites like that Pilfer, you know, Spin Roller and stuff like that. That it's a it's a good platform. But, you know, like you said, the wave is um, you know, the Spotify playlist and, you know, just really I feel like being in a position as an artist to be like, okay, boom, I got a product. I want to capitalize financially off my product, you know what I mean? And in this day and age, you know, you have to you have to decide like, you know, um, okay, bet I'm get I, I can get exposure, but you know, to take my to take my craft, to take everything to my business to the next level, I definitely have to start, you know, pulling in some ducats, man. I have to start making some bread off this stuff. And um so when I record and put out projects, you know, a lot of people add me to their Spotify playlist and, you know, my my account, you know, be looking straight, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. but uh, I know, I don't know, I know this kind of behind the scenes, but they be yeah. having shit like, you know, you pay whoever and they put you on the right playlist. Because sometimes it's like, and even with Spotify with me, I have daily mixes. So, yeah. you know, I got the people I listen to. But sometimes yeah. they just slide a little new person in there and it sounds just like everybody else. So that shit like, yeah. okay. So they, yeah. I don't know how they doing that shit, but somebody doing yeah. that shit. Yeah, man. It, it's probably the labels putting them shits on behind them too now. Because usually yeah. them people be signed, they just people you ain't really heard of. Yo, yo, definitely. Like, yeah, a lot of labels have already signed today. Uh, today labels, you know, that's, you just, it's a, a lot of labels have big rosters, man. Yeah, it's I forgot art. about, you remember that, I forgot his name, but you remember the one artist that was acting like he wasn't signed, but he was signed the whole time, but he was acting like he wasn't signed? That happened like a couple years ago. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's like independence wave right now. So he's yeah. walking around, I'm independent, I'm independent, but he wasn't. Yeah, that's the trend. Yeah, yeah. that was the trend because like, everybody was, if somebody was, if somebody was bubbling and then they was walking around saying. Probably because of Nipsey. Nipsey made you know, it hot. Do Nipsey, Ch Chance, the, Chance yeah. the Rapper. It was Chance. Uh, it was Chance. It was Chance. Oh, Chance. yeah, it Chance. was Chance. He was the one he was that signed? he was signed the whole time. Wow. He, he was acting like he wasn't signed though. I never knew. I know. I know. Uh, Tech Nine, man, he really, he really made the wave on the independent. Um, he, he, I think he was like, you know, he was like one of the, one of the first artists to really, you know, do a major on the indie level. Um. And I think he, I think he kind of opened the door up for, you know, what I mean, for artists to really look into that anyway. Me personally, man, just as an artist, you know, I don't, um, I don't show anybody what, however, whatever way you feel is best for you, you know, whatever you feel is best for your situation. That's the way I feel like you should go. You feel like, you know, you don't have a better opportunity going with a major. Then you know do that. You know what I'm saying. If you feel like you're gonna be in a better space to do an indie, then go that route too. Like everybody just has a everybody's life is different. Everybody has a different life story. You know what I mean. Well, so I don't count no other. I don't count no another man's pockets. You know I'm, I I kind of mind my own business. I never question why you know somebody would you know go the route in which they go because at the end of the day, man, life ain't going life is not gonna be you know, everybody not gonna have the same blueprint. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To, for success, at the end of the day. So, I look, I look at rap. I look at this rap the same way I look at ball. Like, you know what I'm saying? Basketball, football, or whatever. Because you know, in my hometown, a, a lot of young cats get drafted into the NFL. They play ball. You know what I mean? And 
they all take different routes, but they all, you know, become successful. They all start as as young as training and then they come up and then they go to, you know, like a big SEC school and then they get drafted and then some don't go to big SEC school. Some go to JUCO. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Some 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 players go overseas and hoop in Germany and then and then get a shot and come back and play in the D League and then, you know, get an opportunity to play in the NBA. So I want just me personally, I want Whatever way is the way for yeah, me. Say, why don't you? Uh, I think you should. I actually just um, the interview before you. I've been interviewing a lot yeah. of people from Canada. Okay, yeah, yeah. Canada they the black, way. black people though, but they was like one of them was <laughs> like he was like shit. He went to Russia and went on the voice out there. He was like fuck it, <laughs> bro. <laughs> that's was, why I'm yeah. telling people I'm hottest in Europe right now, man. You Russia, Poland, Italy, Ukraine, um. Right now, you know. Why don't you find out the artists out there and do a remix with them or some shit? You know what I'm saying? Collaborate. You already got your name out, so just yep. whoever, they already gonna want to mess with you anyway. Because mm-hmm. to them, U.S. rappers, U.S. black rappers, elite. artists, yeah, yeah, we so elite. Reach out to like my, I got another homie like that I interviewed before. Man, yep. he went. I love he, it. He was. He was. He was kind of. Um, he the same way. Like he. He went to over there. He went to France. Man, yo, he said all his videos getting like millions of views out there, everything. I'm telling you, bro, like, I'm a- a- analytically, you know, because now, you know, at this stage, I really study my analytics and I study, you know, my numbers. And, I, and, and you know, I see, like, in those areas, analytically, that's where, you know, that I get numbers at. That's what, that's rapidly. That's what the, the, the comment engagement, the organic comment engagement come from, you know, uh, Europe, man. I got comments in my on, on my YouTube page. I can't even really understand because it it's in a whole different language. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And but I, I and I had before this COVID thing, I, I really had stuff geared up to uh, you know take off. Like had um, you know concerts in Moscow mm-hmm. set up for the summer, and I was just you know I was just in the process of. Uh, you know, getting getting everything, my visa and all that stuff taken care of, and I still, uh, I still want to do it, man. I still think, I still think that's the move for me, man. You know, I'm really going. I, that's what I really been focusing on, man. Just you know, focusing on that European love and going there, and you know, possibly get hot, and then you know, they maybe they'll see it in the U.S. and then you know that that'll spill over to uh, you know. I feel like once people see that footage <coughs> of like you know. The, how crazy the concert is and, and how crazy everybody is turned. Then they gonna be like, "Oh man, who is this guy? Like, who is this guy? Let me check him out." And then they check out the music, and then they become fans. And then oh, here I'm, here I am over in the states. Same thing, in it, in it cracking, bro. Mm-hmm. Over here in the states, bro. What's the next move right now? The next move right now, like you know, honestly, um. I've been focusing on the creative aspect for a minute, but right now I'm really focusing on on my business, man. Like you know, because you know, with the influx of of love, you know, I have been getting, you know, not only just from Europe, just just from people in general. When I had those had that organic engagement in the comments, I started thinking like the stock market. Okay, okay, now my stock is rising. How can I capitalize? You know, financially. Because it's like, you know, it's like Outkast said uh, in that song, like, we're making the crowd move, but we ain't making no dough, like, you know, and, I, and it, it was bothering me, like, okay, I got this product that people are really gravitating to, but, you know, my pockets is not getting laced the way, you know, it's not lining up. So, and, and I really saw that because, um, you know, I really had to, I just had, you know, just sat down with people and just been reading, uh, reading this book and just and sitting down with some people um, that I've been working with. And it's because, you know, my, you know, just having to get my business infrastructure together so that I can't put myself in a position to uh, capitalize off my product. You know what I mean? You see right now, this is my merch. I got my, I got my own merch and everything like that. So honestly, my next move is is taking what what I have 
created already creatively and really put myself in a position to, uh, you know, capitalize financially. So uh, I'm about to start working with this company um, that's going to really help me in, in that regard, you know, um, just doing a lot of drop ship as far as just like put them, slapping my logo on everything I can and, and really capitalizing off, off, off merch, merch sales and stuff like that. So that's the way, man, just getting my business, just focusing on the business aspect. And then learning the business so that I won't put myself in a position to sign something where, you know, I'll be putting out all this great material. And, you know, you know, also I, I know everybody's seen the last dance and you know how we all felt for Scotty Pippen, how he was like, you know, one of the like top players in the NBA, but he had like, you know, you know, uh the one of the worst salaries he was making the worst. So you know, that I always feared that. I don't want to, you know, be become one of the dopest rappers. But he ended up and, making more money than, well, not in Jordan, like in the career, because, you know, well, he went to the Blazers in the Houston. And so he ended up making Houston. more money at the end than Jordan did. Yeah, he, yeah, he ended up making and more money. Bulls, he didn't make that money. Yeah, but that's the, that's the thing, though. You know, at the end of his career, he ended up making more money. But during the time he won six NBA championships, he was making the list, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't want to put out championship type music and not be able to, uh, you know, provide for my, for my shorty. You know what I mean? Provide. But yeah, my, but then at the same time, like, I, to me, that's like that's what I said. Like that's where you gotta kind of work on branding and like yo. you said, all the merchandise and you gotta just, like I said, be selling your stuff. Man. You have like, even one right? one sale is better than no sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and don't get me don't get me wrong. I've had, you know, even this year, I you know, I look just looking at my numbers and everything. I've had good sales, but you know, I I watched an interview that Master P did, and he was like, you know, priority or whoever he was sitting out having a meeting with, they was ready to get him. I think he said they was ready to get him a million dollar deal. He said his brother C Murder went with him, and and P turned it down, and he was like the Jeez. whole ride home. See, Joe Buttons off Joe Buttons off the podcast said he turned down a ten million dollar deal. Because you got to realize that if some if they really if they willing to offer you that, then you can get more. Hmm. If somebody willing to offer me a million dollars, then I gotta I mean, be worth ten. Yeah, that means you at least worth ten. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, I look at my numbers. I'm like, okay, if I made a, I look at the amount of money average. You know, I probably make. You know, if I look. The music and the and the product I put out, you know, what I'm saying, I was like, okay, if I can make a thousand dollars, I can make ten thousand dollars. But then the, the main thing, the first thing is, you have to uh, whatever you made has to beat what you invested. So that's but the just, first thing. So it's like, you know, what I'm saying, like you play, you said five hundred, so you yo, got to make five just to be yo, even. Just to break. <laughs> that's the yeah. thing, and, that, and that's the thing. I'm glad you said that because as as artists who've been, you know, been grinding for so long, like, how many times can you accept just break it even? Like, you know, you don't want to just break even no more. Like, and, and, and I don't want to get, I don't want to get this misconstrued into people thinking that, you know, I want these artists who just money hungry and only care about the money because trust me, I've been doing it for the love for free for, for a less amount of money for a long time. You know what I mean? And I've had those conversations with people like who will tell me, you know, always remember, you know, stay true to who you are, you know, don't get caught up in the money and, and blah, 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 you know, and, and, and that's fine. And at the end of the day, I love hip hop. I love rap more than anything. I'm always going to do it for the love. But at the end of the day, it's just like if you are a construction worker and then you sit back. Yeah, and you have to provide for you. You have to take care of your livelihood. Like yeah. You can't make music and you ain't you can't eat. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they don't you can't put you can't put unless you got something else unless you got another job where it can take care of you and then you could do the music when you ain't doing that if you got something they, like that but like, they, i mean they, a lot they, of artists like nobody that nobody wants to nobody wants to go to these jobs bro and work for these people who treat them like crap yeah you know what i'm saying first of all who not really getting fully compensated for their time and then you sitting on a dream and, and that's all you can think about. All you know what I'm saying, day. you can, like a lot of it's, it's a lot of people. I like a couple of dudes I interviewed. They're barbers. 
That's shit like it. that. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be something That's like no, you, you gotta just find some hustles you can do, you know, to kind of yeah. support it. Yeah. yeah. This yeah, one dude told it. me he about to start doing like advertising for like a lot of companies because he know how to do all the recording and shit. So he made jingles and shit. But that's the thing though, man. Yeah. But that's the thing. That, and that's dope. And you know what I'm saying? I always tilt my head off to that. But, you know, as an artist, man, you know, I know every, like I said, everybody is different, man. Everybody has a different vision. You know what I mean? My vision is to be, you know, one of the top artists to really be doing it big and at the end of the day, like, it's kind of hard to put yourself in a certain position if you always got to be side hustling. You know what I'm saying? You want to Look at Nipsey Hustle. What was he doing? Oh. He had millions of hustles. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That shit, I'm telling you, that's how it's like, it's almost like the music is just a front for your brand and your business now. It's oh. different now. And, and that's the thing. I, I want, I would want that, I would want my hustles to correlate with, um, Create what I got going on creatively, like you know what I'm saying. I will want, like, I will want my, I, I will want my hustle to be my original ideas. I don't, I don't want my hustle to be helping some other company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh, like, if I got, if I got, like, you know, um, an idea for a tea. You know what I mean? This yeah. tea that's gonna help uh, wellness or whatnot, help people uh, become. Uh, more healthy or whatnot, like that's my hustle. I'm gonna put my logo on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm gonna push that with the stuff and, and the infrastructure that I got going on. And I want to go to work for Coca Cola and then you know continuously making Coca Cola big and you know clocking in all my hours, all my days, all my years. Yeah. You know, I might be getting a good check. You know what I mean? Because they're gonna pay good hourly. But it's like boom, okay, hey man, you know. But the, I want to uh, apply that. The thing about this, I was thinking, you know, they said Kanye a billionaire, right? Yo. And then he was, they were saying, Forbes said he worked 1.6. He Yo. texted them back and said he worked 3.4. We Yo. know Kanye from music, but that shit on his, on the, when they broke it down, it was real yeah. estate. Yo. It was Easy. Yeah. It wasn't on music. Brand his music was like, the music was like probably like 20, 30%. For everybody. Like, it ain't, like, the music is like, it is. That music is just to open their eyes, and then the people gonna be like, "What else you got going on?" They gonna want to get on. Yeah, oh. but that's the thing, though. Even that's the thing. Like you said, clothes. It can be yeah. whatever you like. Art, fucking color, yeah. fucking whatever you want to say. Anything. Gotta have yeah. some water. What the fuck yeah. you like? What do you like? Yeah. That's what you need to be selling to people because they gonna. Yeah. Like, we. That's how the you thing. Smoke, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, bro. And and that and that's the thing. I, and Apple, that's the thing. I was, <laughs> that's the thing I was saying. It was just. It's just like. Man, you know, your your passion, whatever you 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 love to do, is definitely gonna be the stepping stone to to get you in the door business wise, and you know, be able to help you set up, you know, your your empire. You know what I mean? Your corporation. Yeah, it's crazy. He, you talk about Michael Jordan. He got paid the least in the NBA, but he made most of his money from his shoes. You know what I'm saying? His endorsement deals, stuff like that, and 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 so they like they say your talent is going is always going to open doors for you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I would say then it's like man, not like now. So hip hop is old now. Hip hop is almost shit about fifty, almost at least fifty mm -hmm. years old. So Yo. you gotta look at stuff like this. Look at uh, all the rappers, the OGs. They moved on. Yeah. L Cool J is doing other stuff. Uh, Queen Latifah yeah. is doing other stuff. Ice Cube is doing other stuff. Uh, yeah. All of them. They all doing, like I'm saying, it's like you almost got to keep going because you can't just be, like, yeah. you, imagine they stayed at that age and they was really, like Will Smith, of course. Yeah. But I'm saying, imagine they just stayed at rap and just try to yeah. just do rap and that's it. Like, even jay Z's doing other stuff. So it's like, you got to uh, keep evolving. I think it's, I think as a, I think as a person, man, when you really, get into bit when you really get into the the mode where you making money on a consistent basis man it's kind of hard not to think business minded you know what i'm saying when you broke and you just rapping like you ain't saying no money coming in you're not going to it's it's going you're not going to put yourself in the mind of a business man because you ain't saying no you're not saying no capital but that's but a, uh, i'm going to hit you with a bible verse real quick yo i think therefore i am Yo. So 
So shit, you gotta think that shit first. <laughs> oh, like that why that's why I got yeah. my logo. This is original. My name on the back of this shirt, everything, bro. I see it yeah, like you gotta believe it first. I <laughs> saw this, I saw something as a little kid that I, that I carried with me to this day. I was I was a I was a little kid and I had these cousins, I had these female cousins that my mom would take me to their to their house, my auntie and uncle would. They would watch me. They would babysit me while my mom was at work. And this was around the time New Kids on the Block was big. It was popping. And these cousins I had was obsessed with New Kids on the Block, man. They had New Kids on the Block bed spreads, bro. They had posters, pencils, lunch pills, you know, clocks, alarm clocks, anything, bro. That just showed me, like, okay. I, I knew even then at that moment, way before I even decided to be an artist about, you know, marketing and branding and expand and expansion. You know what I'm saying? My mindset definitely right now, it's, it's a reason why I don't, you know, do certain things, you know, to my body because I see myself, you know, endorsing this or being a part of this. You know what I mean? It's a reason why I present myself in the way I present myself because that's my brand, because I know ultimately in the future, this is the position I want to be in. You know what I'm saying? Like some people listen to my music like, oh man, you got a good, you know, positive vibe to it. You know what I'm saying? And I maintain that because I know ultimately I'm, I'm going to be in this arena, which ultimately is going to help me make more money. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's going to help me build and continuously build and, and, and set up these trust funds and, and, and for my for my children, my children's children. And, you know, this is not chess, man. It's it's chess. And that's why I go back to saying, like, you know, all this time, you know, I've been, you know, really focused on, uh, you know, working on my craft and getting better as an artist, which I'm always continuing to do. But, like, you know, you ask me what I got going on right now, man, it's definitely one of the main focal points is business, like getting my business right. You know what I'm saying? Because without, without the business, then I realize that I'm stifling what I want to do creatively. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't want to be just cat, just, you know what I'm saying? I'm barred up, putting out bars. I'm yeah, I mean, you know, think about it, man. Like, you got people that's like, you got people out here that ain't talented, but they making yep. their money because they business <laughs> on point. <laughs> exactly. And I was going to say that, bro. Yeah. Exactly, bro. Exactly. It's just like, man, I always, always... I always parallel rap to to ball like always. You don't want to be, you don't you don't want to. Yeah, be they got one. that big. They got a lot of players with a big deal, but they ain't living they ain't up no to hoopers. it. Yeah, they ain't no hoopers, bro. They not. They can, you know, they barely holding down. They get a couple rebounds to every six point eight points. Well, you got people that game. once they get their big deal, then they just you know, don't hear about them no more. They over some with. People, and you know, some people just satisfied with making it to the NBA. You know what I mean? I'm not just satisfied with making it to the NBA. I believe that, you know, I, I get inspired by the Kanye's. I get inspired by, you know, uh, the Diddy's, uh, the Jay-Z's, like the Dr. Dre's. Like, you know, I get inspired by them because, you know, they came from where I come from. Like, that's, that's what hip hop is all about. You know, people who have come from nothing, essentially use their talent to get to where they at today. I feel like that's the beauty of hip hop. The fact that I can come from the country of Alabama, dirt roads and pine trees. Y'all used to be barefoot? I, I can't stand being barefoot. Not me, really. <laughs> <laughs> shit out there. I wear some saddles or something like. The mosquitoes eating your ass up out there? Mosquitoes, you know what I'm saying? Fish, fish and ponds and, you know, so I go from that and then, you know, eighth grade, I moved to, to Montgomery, Alabama, which is a small city. It's that's not a real too. big city. It's still country, though. You know what I mean? That's why I had but, to go to join the Marine Corps. At, I had to go to Montgomery. And the Gump? Montgomery, yeah. yeah so, you, so you seen what the Gump is. So to come from that and, and then to make it in hip-hop, man, that's a feat, man. You know, that's that's the motivation. That's what keep you pushing, man. You know, everybody that know me, everybody that know me personally know where I come from, them backwoods of Alabama, bro, country. You want to know country? I'm from the country, so you cannot imagine. <laughs> yeah, I know bro. country. I'm from the country, too. You, you country, saying bro. that? Huh? You know, lived in the trailer, 
Uh, you get you from Mississippi, so you you know the world, bro. So imagine that world, and then you see me rocking out at the VMAs, man, or up there winning the Grammy. Or, you know, that's just like, man, it's not no easy task, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have to be business minded to come from that. It's gonna take more than just being able to rap good and make good songs. The songs is gonna carry you. You know, the songs is gonna put you in front of people. But it's been having your business right that's going to help you. That's that's going to give you longevity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll say what. Um, so what happened when you rap with for Charlemagne? Oh man, I remember that. I remember that day like it was yesterday too. Right? A lot. Uh, one thing about that night, I rapped with Charlemagne. A lot of people didn't know, bro. I was straight on. I was straight sleeping out my whip. You know what I mean? And um, I had that? a job though. I had you know I had went through some stuff. Uh, I had went through some stuff. You know, in my personal life, that just kind of like, you know, just put me in a position where I was like, you know, had to crash out my whip for a second. Um, I was down and out, bro. Like, you know, I ain't see no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I was frustrated. I couldn't hear from God. You know, the manager I had at the time, you know, I was working in, I'm working in Jersey. He was like, man, Charlamagne about to be interviewing Emory Jones, who's uh, Jay-Z's that's Jay-Z's boy who took the charge for him, you know what I mean? Say so he's gonna be interviewing him over in Harlem. Hey, Jimmy John, he like mind you told me this last minute. I changed out my work clothes real quick. Boom, hop in the hop in the um hop in the whip with bruh. We head over to the city, you know what I'm saying? Pay that toll, uh, which was like fifteen dollars, pay that fifteen dollar toll. Um, go to go to the venue, which is Jimmy Jams in Harlem. Mind you, it's packed, it's like 250 people in this in this store. First, they didn't want to let us in. Then they finally let us in, and we get upstairs and we watch the interview. I'm all the way. If you watch my live, I had went live. I'm all the way in the back. <laughs> so you know, like when you trying to get out the club, when they let the club out, yeah. and you gotta like make your way through all these people. My mindset was never to get to Charlemagne, bro, or talk to him. I didn't think that. I didn't even think that was gonna be possible. I just wanted there was to watch people in there. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to watch the interview. Yeah, it was like a it was packed, bro. It was packed with a lot of people. And this New York, so this socially, they not the same as people in the South. It ain't no excuse me or you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, just like, just like get out the way. <laughs> it's like, bro, make your way. So finally the interview is over. Man, my manager, like, all right, bro, let's make our way to the world. Let's get outside. So, you know, like I said, it's like the club. It's like at the end of the club when you're trying to weed through people and make your way through a crowd of people. And um, it's these stairs. I'm, I finally make my way through to all these people, get to these stairs, bro. I kid you not. I get to these stairs, who I intersect with, bro. Clean, nobody in the middle, nobody around. <laughs> who I intersect with, bro. Charlemagne, bro. Me and Charlamagne, like, walking beside. Well, I'm talking about me and Charlamagne walking side by side. I just cracked a little joke because I know Charlamagne from the South. I'm from the South. I was just like, what's up, bro? I'm from the South, too, man. You know, I'm trying to make it up here, man. As an artist, you know what artists say, the, the artist feel. I'm up here trying to do my thing, too. He was like, he was just like, oh, man, dope, my brother. You know, keep pushing. Keep doing your thing like that. Boom. I'm thinking that's it. You know what I'm saying? We go our separate way. We, we still walking side by side to the exit to get outside. We get outside this Harlem, bro. It's a sidewalk, and um, you know everybody's trickling outside. I say it's about 150 people outside on this sidewalk. Charlemagne's chilling. People walking up to him, asking for autograph. People want to take pictures with him. Nobody's walking up to him to rap. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing here looking at this dude, like you know, man, I should try to spit for him, but I'm like, I'm like, nah, he probably get people do that to him all the time. So I'm like, whatever, I ain't gonna bother. But the, my manager I had at the time was like pushing me. I was like, man, go rap for him. I was like, all right, man, I'm gonna ask him. I was like, yo, what's up, bro? You, you mind if I drop some bars for you real quick, man? You know, some. He was like, nah, man, nah, I'm good, I'm good. So he say that. I turn, I turn and walk away, like, ah, oh, yeah, I feel you, bro. Like, and so I turn and walk away and leave. Like, I tried on some, I tried type situation. But the moment I turn and walk away, I hear him say, all right, man, go ahead, go ahead. I'm like, oh, straight up. So at that point in time, I'm like trying to, I'm like, oh man, what I got, what I got, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to, you know, you go, you go through that whole process like, dang, let me find something real quick, <laughs> you know? Boom, he only said I could go. I just go, I just, da 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 da, you know what I'm saying? Blessing, blessing, everybody, 
And I noticed that the people that was not paying attention, that was just in, engaged in other type of conversations, I noticed they looked like, you know, everybody started turning around and everybody just got quiet and looked, let me do my thing. And then I finished, you know what I'm saying? They gave me props. Charlemagne dapped me up, man. You see me, you see in the video, he dapped me up. Um, you know, it was definitely situation. I was it was definitely situations where I was like, you know, nervous, you know, that I had the nervous jitters and everything. But I was like, I wasn't missing the opportunity to spit something, or, you know, just get that, to get that footage or whatnot. Well, I'm saying that's, that's ain't nothing else happening. I ain't seen no Breakfast Club interview, so shit. You ain't, that's that. Uh, what happened? You ain't you ain't see the you ain't see the Breakfast Club interview yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I, I, but you, you know, already got the pole politics interview. Yeah, I don't I know. It. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna keep it funky with you, like. I was never a big fan of him because he came from that Wendy Williams shit. Like, I don't mess with that shit. Yo. So that's I'm, why he's the same way because he that he came from her. So yo. I, don't, I don't like I don't like I don't like people like that. I don't like these lads. Yeah, yeah. I don't know nigga. I don't like them boys like that. It just you. It's a kid. That's not my style. The, so I, I, ne I never respect. I don't respect that shit. I like Sway. I respect I put, Sway. It's like it's like um. After that, after that interview, you know, it's like the people on the outside looking at, you know, who not artists, who just fans, they see that and they be like, oh man, this Charlamagne, like that's you doing it big, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But nobody know, like right after that, you know, I was on cloud nine, I was happy that I got the opportunity, but you know, I, I, I was on cloud nine, I had to go back to my whip and crash on my whip for that night, you know what oh. I mean? She so real, was, real quick, huh? Right after it's that, it's like, <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. I posted a picture on. I posted a picture with Charlemagne on my Facebook. Got like three hundred likes. You know, instantly, like I was like, damn, you know, I love. You know, back to the whip, back to the li real life, back to dreaming. Um, I will say, man, when you when you're on the artist side, it's definitely things that um you're gonna pick and choose what you're gonna want to be a part of. But it then is definitely some is this it's definitely some media outlets that when you coming up, you're gonna have to take advantage of. You know what I'm saying? Just to take advantage of uh take advantage of the press. You know what I'm saying? Um I don't agree with everything Charlemagne says, but I could I could respect the fact that, you know, he 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 he's um he speaks his opinion like keep it real like he's not afraid to tackle you know certain certain artists or, or, or get them the real um you know same thing with Vlad and that in that space it's just like man dang but you know this interview could help me uh you know get you know really help me get that exposure and put me in front of people that you know what I'm saying I want to be in front of I feel like you know as you get Bigger as an artist than the certain media outlets that you. But to like, me, like I said, J Cole me, did one Breakfast Club interview. That's what I'm saying. To me, never seen him on there again. <laughs> I'm saying to me, I just say the main thing is the artist you should focus on. If you focus yep. on making your your business better and your music yep. better, the media gonna come. They gonna come. You gotta yep. do cause shit. If you like I said, <laughs> you say business, that means what you need to do. You need a publicist. Yo. So you're gonna get the interviews, but you know, music tight, they gonna man, like I said, them niggas just you know, they just chasing whoever hot, man. So you know, the bag, man. It's a, yeah, it's a that's what I'm saying. Too. So it's like if you just handle your business and make keep a lot of making your music better and better, that shit ain't that shit automatic. That's like just that's like that's like you make money, you get a nice car. It's just automatic. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's another thing, it's another thing too, is another thing like a lot of people don't know that you know it, when you sign to a label. They already have press runs, yeah, set up for you. That's why I you know don't like I mean? the. Uh, I don't like. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to be. I don't never want to be a part of that shit. I don't want to be the we all interviewing fucking the baby and maybe at the same time. I'm the nigga that interviewed them two years ago before you knew yeah. them. That's yeah. me. Yeah, I ain't the one it's that's tough, interviewing man. them now because they dropping the album. That ain't me. I interviewed yeah. them two years ago when none of y'all was messing with them. That's me. It's tough, man. It's it's tough because you know, yeah. At them, the you know, the more time pass in hip hop, the less organic a lot of things become. You know what I mean? Because 
it becomes the business side really be, starts taking over more and more. So, so when you do see these artists on a press run and they, they had the same outfit on because they they far they go they you started the Breakfast Club, yeah. Ebro same in the day. morning, yeah, yeah. Sway, you know what I'm saying? Like so they so it's just like man, and then too the interviews start becoming so stale. Like yeah, you know what I'm mean? saying? I don't even because I don't want to be like to me it's like. Once I feel like I'm interviewing you and I have to yep. be talking about the same thing everybody else talking about, it's like, yep. what's the point of doing an interview? It's like, go listen to that one yep. then, shit. Yep. <laughs> you, yep. you got it. That's the interview right there. So yep. like, if I can't That's put my I, spin on and my twist on it, well, we just- And I feel like, I feel like, you know, I feel like it's dope to like, you know, build these type of relationships we got. I don't want to get to a certain level and stop messing with you. You know what I mean? Like I feel like all the artists that you in, that you was interviewing before they bubble, they still should be giving you interviews. They like they still should be pulling you up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not, not saying that they owe you something, but it's like why would you sever that organic connection that you already got with this person? You know what I'm saying? Just because now you at a higher level. But you know like, at the same time, I just like to me. I'm still going to be doing pole politic interviews. I don't care if I'm Grammy nominated. You know what I mean? Yeah, but just I'm saying, cause... like, to me, I just look at it like, shit, that's just how the game go. They don't really yep. owe me nothing more in the interview. Well, what else yep. they owe me stuff for the interview? So it's like, yep. it's my yep. job to build my brand up. It ain't their job. Yep. <laughs> yep. So yep. if I build my shit up, if, I, if my shit keep on bubbling, but I already yep. know. Watch this. Yep. But see, I see you, you got like, the, you I'm going to tell you how it go. Like, 10 yep. years from now, they gonna be like, I'm gonna be really like OG by then. Yeah. You know, Ten years from now, I'm gonna be probably shit. You'll probably see me on TV, and it'll be all yep. these people like, oh, I fuck with Poe. I was on Poe Pop to get show because yep. I didn't interview too many people. So it just yep. you can't talk to who can you talk to really that no know me like that. I didn't interview yep. too many people. Like yep. I said, I'm I out could there. Say, bro, every, <laughs> I know I'm out there. Every level I've been at as a, at a, as an artist. And you interview me like, yeah. <laughs> like no, no cap, like young Flash, at every huh? level. I was what level was you, know, you at, Young Flash? I was young when I was, and I had a different name. I was going by Flash. You interview, you interview me when I could barely get in the studio, when I could barely construct the song in the studio, when I was barely getting shows, and I was scared to, you know, barely could get up in front of a crowd and rock a crowd. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You was. He was interviewing me, and now I see the level I'm at. Now I'm killing shows. I knock out five songs and five out. You know what I mean? I'm just a whole different beast. And and but we got to, we've been built that relationship. People don't even know like it was at one point. You was like help, helping me behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? On some management tip, like or yeah. just you know just helping me, um, just ch trying to help me get out there, man. You know what I'm saying? Like so. I said, what I happened with like, the uh, Rock Nation? Then you gonna I see Rock felt, Nation? Yeah, man. I had I, I brought in, I done been in uh, a lot of different um label having meetings, and, and that's the thing that opened my eyes about getting my business right as an artist, man. It showed me that because you can sit in these labels and play your music stuff with them, but at this day and age, you know, people respect. The business, the numbers. Yeah. Ironically, we're in a ironically we're in a business that's about words and how we put words together. But essentially, it's about numbers. It's about boom. What what can you do for me? Yeah, because they they basically I look at it now. They basically want you. All they want to do is put a battery in your back. <laughs> they don't want to do nothing else. They so just you wanna, can get a they piece got of a, my You tips. got a controller. They just want you to put that battery in that controller. Is that yeah. it? It's just like it's just like it's just like any other job, man. You know what I'm saying? If you got a if you got a trade and you went to college and you and you got these certain credentials, boom, we're gonna hire you. Pay you X amount of dollars and let you go to work. And essentially you're gonna help our company rise up. You know what I mean? We're gonna take the taxes like out. You said, it's kind of it's kinda of funny too though, because it's like, okay, they want like, okay, they looking at you like, okay, say they wanna sign you and they say, Yo. oh, they're looking at you like you're worth like, like you said that million dollar, but that's yep. only ten million. So yep. shit, if they trying to sign you for ten million, that means how much can you really make on your own? Why do you even need Bro, them? Like Cardi the B, they didn't thing. have to do nothing with Cardi B. Cardi B was gonna do this shit anyway. Bro, she was about to do what she did anyway. 
I, I could I could say the the one thing I've learned with this music, man, everybody's gonna try to lowball you at first. Yeah. Everybody. That's 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 their business sense. Like it's like everybody's gonna come out the gate trying to lowball you. I'm like, okay, you you trying to offer me X amount of dollars. They just trying to see what you know. They trying to see where your gut at. Yeah. Trying to see because it's just like I look at this music, bro, how I look at my 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 actual social life. People are gonna try to play you as much as you allow them to play you, bro. That's just the truth. You dating a girl, she's gonna push the buttons that you allow her to push for as long as you let her push them buttons. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? She's gonna do certain things in that relationship long enough until you check it. Period. That's just the name. That's just that's everybody. The name. You know, that's how people are. That's just people, bro. My children. That's even I animals do. too. Huh? <laughs> even animals do that shit. You animals. watch animals eat the same shit, bro. Anybody. I got. I got kids. Like I, I've learned stuff, and I learned little stuff in life that that I'm gonna that's gonna help me as an artist, bro. Like I said, I got kids, bro. I got two kids. I got a son and a daughter. They gonna do stuff as long as I allow it, bro. And the same thing with these record companies. A lot of people fear um, negotiation and renegotiation and, 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 and pushing aside being lowball because they think that's the only opportunity they're going to get or they feel. You heard what Scotty Pippen said. Man, I couldn't gamble because I had to take care of my family. But sometimes you got to be, you can't be afraid to gamble on yourself. You know what now, I'm you saying? You don't think nobody would have signed Scottie Pippen? That's crazy. That's crazy to hear me think like that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, like, bro, you could have go. You could have yeah. gambled. Bro, you a baller, bro. You could, Super you baller. Go. That was my favorite baller. player. I used to have my hair cut. Like, I used to have that bob like Scottie Pippen. You did? Yeah, you got to know. Man, for, a long, for a long time, but I told somebody else this. For a long time, I had no confidence in myself as an artist. Business wise, I didn't think I was worth this money. You know what I mean? Because everybody, I had listened to people. Oh, everybody's a rapper. Everybody does boom, boom, boom. But at the end of the day, man, I know what I've worked on. I know how hard I worked on my craft, and I know for a fact that my craft is worth X amount of dollars. It, it's it's worth this money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But, I'm a, just like you. I, I've been dreaming to get a record deal or make it in music. But just like you feel like you're an asset to me, I feel like I'm an asset to you. How can we come together? If, and if you ain't gonna give me X amount of dollars, then I'm gonna own my masters. Then at the end of the day, I want to own my own music. You know what I mean? You can say, "Boom, we'll give you X amount of dollars." All right, boom. Let me try to let me get. I will give you a million. I I want five. All right, we can't do five. All right, if you can't do five, then I, I'm gonna own my own masters. I'm not gonna be low ball, bro. If if you want to low ball me, then bye. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bye. And to me, <laughs> I, st- I still say at the end of the day, the the way I'm hearing it, the best route is this kind of really just stay independent and make it's so Yo, many streams, man. It's like so many ways to get money as an artist now. Actually, Yo. uh, you gonna want to hear this interview because tomorrow I'm interviewing this guy. He wrote the, the book, uh, How to Succeed in New Music Business. So he talking mm. about like the new <laughs> shit. Like the you Spotify, posting that on, Instagram. on YouTube? Yeah, I'm interviewing tomorrow. Yeah, I post it. Yeah, yeah he hit me up too, so I'm interviewing see what's up. But yeah, it's like if it ain't like mm-hmm. that, that old shit no more. It ain't how it is no more. It's like man, and it's, it's crazy though. Like people, you were saying, it's it's crazy. Like you know, and people, you know, yeah, put that. I was saying now. Well, hold it's on, like, how I do said, we cap- How do we readily capitalize? How you know am I spitting circles around people? And how can I get that bag, bro? I'm like, I want, I need that, man. How <laughs> show me the way? That's why I'm like at that point. Like, I'm at now. Like, you know, even if I got, even if I got a hundred k, you know, what I'm saying right now that could launch everything. They could put me in a whole different space in my life, just in general. I feel like a lot of people, a lot yeah, of artists, enough though. They ain't gonna lie. It, it ain't you know, know what, bro. That. But you gotta multiply that times ten, like you were saying. How many people you know? How many people you know with a hundred k in their account? Like people you know on your, in your everyday life. How many artists can you genuinely say you know with a hundred k in their account? Just keep it stacked. Keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> you? You got hundred k? Yeah, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> <You got 100K? laughs> 
invest in me, bro. Let's take let's take this thing. Well, yeah, that's what that's like that's like for family, huh? Nah, man. No, I don't got hundred K. You asked a hundred K to invest. No, I don't got hundred K to invest. No, I got hundred K like saved up for my family, but not hundred K to invest. You don't got to invest the whole hundred K. Invest five K. Invest ten. Do you understand, bro? The level and the the different level I can go with ten K. I got all this talent. I got all this talent. I got all this drive. I got all these skills on stage. I'm a people person. I can sell anything with 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 my image. But I run into people every single day that know that, and they not willing to invest a hundred dollars. Huh. You know what I mean? So now people get mad at artists when they bubble and get this money when nobody would invest a dime in you. Like oh. it's it's. Like Gucci may even say, bro, it's gonna be hard to make it as an artist. You ain't got that cheese. He said, man, get your cheese right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's just like at the end of the day, you don't you don't know too many artists, bro, with 10k in their account. To you know, so if you if you talking to an artist who ain't got no money, but they can rap and they've been working on their craft and they be approached by a label, they're not thinking indie. Well, I'm the indie. What I got, I ain't got nothing to, to start indie with, bro. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to turn down a deal, but I'm not going to take anything. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why I was saying at the at the offset of the interview, I was just like, everybody blueprint is different. Everybody can't be the dope boy with, you know what I'm saying? Getting Selling bricks and, you know what I mean? Got $500,000 to invest in that music, man. Some cats just got the talent in the drive. That's just point blank, you know what I mean? The talent in the drive. And then you can say, you know, they had a business set up. But even with in for some artists in a certain position with, you know, good business sense, it's like, okay, we get money. I got five five K in my account off of music. You know what I mean? All right. They wouldn't they offer me millions over here. I'm going to take the millions, man. I'm going to take millions, and they're going to put me on a, a different platform. The Jimmy Kimmel's live, you know what I mean? The VMAs, like, you know, these big platforms that's going to ultimately put me in front of other bigger name companies that's going to ask me to for endorse to endorse their product. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, it's tough, bro. I'll be straight up, bro. You're not going to make it as a rapper. It, it's going to be hard to make it as an independent rapper, man. Money, man. A lot of rappers screaming independent is broke. <laughs> they got no bread to be independent. You know what I mean? Like, what you gonna do? Do open mics all day? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit! What about so? What about the rappers that after they like say like you got like Karen, Jim Jones, little brother? Mm-hmm. You got rappers that like after they had their deals, they stay independent. They ain't broke. Like bro, thug ain't broke. Dick, Dick, Dick Cameron and Jim Jones not rap about selling drugs. Huh. Yes or no? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell these people. All these niggas, all these cats is dope boys, man. Like they capital come f- started from what they did in the streets. You know what I'm saying? And they use hip hop as a way to launder that, or to you, they use hip hop as a way. I, will, I won't say that they dream wasn't to do music first. Yes, it was they dream to do music first. But their capital came from street money, in which they used to get to their dream. All of us ain't street cats. That's not an option for me. I'm not no street cat, bro. I'm not, I'm not selling drugs. I'm not in the kitchen whipping and selling dope. I never have. I never had to. You know, it's never been. The only thing I probably ever thought about selling was some weed. You know what I mean? And I didn't even go through with that. So can like, how can you, what do you tell the artists who coming in with no street capital? Most of it, if you think about rap right now, nowadays, a lot of artists that's successful, but they can't rap. But they come from that street life because they got that money. And the first thing they're going to want to put their money into is hip hop. It's nothing for you to take, and nothing for a dope boy to take your little cousin, little such and such, Give him a couple chains, put money behind the single, have him popping on SoundCloud internet, and he out of here, bro. With 500k, bro, I'm the biggest artist in the world right now. 
and I and you can put me versus anybody at that point. <laughs> you but know what then, I'm still, like, okay, but like how the labels looking at it, you saying five hundred k, so how much they want? You know what I'm saying? Multiply that. No, that's 10. it. If you got five hundred k, you don't need no label. You know, I'm not signing. I got five hundred k. I'm not signing to no label. No, <laughs> way. <laughs> no way. I got five hundred k. That's a trample. That's a spaceship. I need to get to the other millions. I ain't gotta break slight cut the pie with nobody unless you my manager, unless you a part of my actual team. You know what I mean? That, like I got that money. And I'm Andy. I'm only breaking bread with my employees. I'm I'm paying people. I'm not working with no label. All right. And it's just like it's like okay, you know, if you think about even Nipsey's situation, like for a minute he was saying, you know, forget the middleman, cut out the middleman. But he's in and um, too, though. a lot of people were surprised when he was getting ready to do that deal with Atlantic. It was like, well, they was like, why would you do that? But even Nipsey was smart enough to understand that. Okay, yeah, now I'm at a point where the labels yeah, can get take to the next me. Level, yeah. yeah, exactly, bro. Now you you see, it's tough as an artist, man. When everybody throwing that at you, man, stay in, man. Go sign, blah, you, and you like sit here, like man. I ain't got no gas in my world. I'm trying to figure out how I'm paying this bill, pay this bill, and still go to the studio and make records and still get a, a, a cover done and still get a single cover done and still put all my stuff on Apple Music and Spotify and still have an outfit to perform in and still go get a haircut <laughs> and still be able to write and, and, and push myself at a high level, bro, and still got to wake up tomorrow and clock in at work at 7 o'clock and work eight to ten hours. Come on, man! Like I be trying to tell people. Hey, like, that what NBA like, say? I love the game. Shit, I love the game. Shit, you ain't the only one. It. It's a lot of artists, you know. A lot of artists like that. So just the grind, man. man. You know, artists from that. Artists from. That, I gotta still do my shit. Street, like, I ain't gotta still shit. Everybody like that. Artists from that street life. It's cause you love it though. If you love man. it, you gotta keep doing it, huh? I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep pushing it, but you know, I just speak on from the business standpoint aspect, like, you know, it's a it's gonna be a slower process for somebody who ain't come from that street life. You know, say how long how many years do you think you've been focused on the business? I just really actually got into the, the mode of doing it. Okay. Well, what year you started rapping? In two thousand and five. So what you and think I, you and just I, started from, if it was 2005, you would have been studying the business the whole time. Why are you rapping? I would have been probably def- <laughs> I was definitely. That's not to that's not to say that, you know, I would have all this 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 money, man. I would just understand the business, understand the business, and getting up, getting a certain bro. Like you understand? Okay, I tell you like this. I can understand the business. I can make CDs. I can I can sell my CDs, and I have done it. I I've been broke and had a, went to a show broke and left the show with a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? All because my CDs was ten dollars, and people saw me perform and they wanted one. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom. This is me by myself. But you gotta realize, bro. I made that selling CDs ten. But you know, imagine I got rocks in my, in my pocket. You know what I mean? Them joints going for twenty five, and all these J's. <laughs> bro, you making five thousand dollars a day? You did. You making all this. You you making all this money. You making all this money within uh this fast money, bro. It's just different, man. It's a it's a different it's a different aspect, bro. It's a different life, bro. When you know COVID nineteen come come around and you got to get laid off from your job, now you ain't got no income. You got the music income, but that at the same time your job was helping you get in the studio. I'm speaking real life. Man. I'm speaking from the from the standpoint where I'm at as an artist. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak on every artist, but I'm giving you my story, my real. If you listen to J. Cole music when he rapped, he tell you what he was where he was at as an artist. And he had to sign with Rock Nation. You know what I mean? Because he wasn't no street cat with all this coming in with all this money. You know what I mean? So it's just like, hey, man, boom, I gotta get in where I fit in so I can get on, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's me. I'm in that vein. Even Crit, Big Crit, he went on Street Cat. He had to get signed with uh, Sight, Cinematic, you know what I'm saying? Then do the deal with Def Jam to make his way. 
And I feel like in that regard, it's a that's the lane for us type of artists. You got the street artist lane, and then you got the artists who <laughs> come from broke and no capital so and just it, talented. It sounds like you kind of got to sign with an indie label first. I, I don't. I, I don't mind signing with an infrastructure who is smart business wise, who care about their product, the quality of their product, and who know what they doing with the artists. You can, it could be pole politic and records. As long <laughs> as, uh, as long as you know what you're doing, then I'm with it. I'm not gonna sign with you and you got me over here, uh, you know, <laughs> you got me over here uh, doing stuff that's not conducive to, you know, me as an artist or you want, or we not getting no bread. It's just like, I'm just spinning my wheels. You no, know, period, point. got an artist. I got to let you listen to him. His name, Chad D, uh 254. That's his mm-hmm. name. Yeah. He cool, though. He from Sacramento. It's like his cousin, so. Got you. And, that, and that's that dope, man. That shit be too much work, man. <laughs> All this stuff is work. And that's the thing. You got, that's a mindset. You got, you got it. You can't, you can't look at it like that, bro. You got to realize that all this stuff going to be work. It's going to, if you listen to Drake talk and you look at Drake, you would think, you know, he just came up overnight, man. But he'll tell you, man, it's a lot of work that goes into being at that level. Bro, it's a lot of work that goes into being an artist. I put out, I put out three mixtapes within the past couple years. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a lot of writing, bro. And I, that's a lot of recording. <laughs> that's a lot of pushing. You know what I mean? All the videos. I got like a hundred videos just of all that stuff. Visuals. Just man, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of late night, man. It's a lot of money being spent that goes into that, man. It's a lot of working on your craft, and I still got a hundred more songs. And, and my phone is waiting to be recorded. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a lot of work, but a lot of tireless, tireless work. It's a lot of being overlooked. And, but I feel like one thing that we've overlooked within um this interview and, and speaking on the business, which is a dope, but I feel like a key ingredient. One thing I always realize about artists who are successful right now is the fact that such and such was able to talk to such and such who talked to such and such that got them an opportunity. You know what I mean? 50 Cent uh, got an opportunity from, from Eminem because Eminem heard his DJ playing a 50 Cent song. Eminem got an opportunity with Dre because his lawyer connected him with Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? So it be them people in the middle that you got to figure out how to get in contact with and rub elbows with who can, you know, kind of connect you with the right people. You know what I'm saying? So I would definitely say networking is uh, it's just as important as having your business right. If not more important, because if you ain't making a certain amount of dollars, at least, you know, shoot, man, you might know. That's why, that's the reason why I moved up here to the East Coast, because it was a it was a way to put me around people who could possibly know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. I would definitely say I got a lot of opportunities just cause uh, somebody saw me perform in an open mic that knew somebody else that had a bigger platform that got me on them, and then it just it was a domino effect. So that's something I would definitely tell artists, man. You know, close mouth don't get fed. Never be afraid to open your mouth and reach out to people. You know what I mean? and talk to people. Because if you one of them type of people, you know, naturally I'm a loner. But I realized that, you know, that mindset wasn't going to help me become successful as an artist. You really have to reach out and talk to people, man. And let them know. Let them see the hunger. Let them see the passion in your face that, look, bro, I'm nice. I could do this. And I'm going to continue to work. And I'm going to continue to stay hungry. You know what I'm saying? Bet. All right, I'm going to talk to my mans who know Sway, <laughs> get you on Sway, you know what I mean? You go on Sway and freestyle, kill it. Boom, you in front of millions, just like that. Yeah, That's so, uh, I'm Sway waiting for the some shit. You ain't seen that shit with Sway? He got some shit right now. You just, uh, he go Instagram all the time. You just get on there and start freestyling for him. On his live? Hell yeah. Yeah, I be checking it out. I be on there, be trying to get picked. I went for a call. Not oh, he didn't pick you yet? 
No, I ain't been picked. But I'm uh, waiting for Netflix. I sent all my information to Netflix. I'm waiting to get on this show, Rhythm, season two of Rhythm and Flow. Okay, that'll be tight for get you. on that show? Yeah, that's gonna I'm be a good win. look. Yeah. I'm winning. No cap. But I've been kind of keeping it low because, you know, I, I ain't really been like, you know, I know it's like a lot of times I will get an opportunity and I go telling all these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta just wait, man. You never know. Yeah, yeah I know how that go. Yeah, I, would like, I would say this, I would like to be on the show because I feel like it's, it's a dope opportunity. I feel like in this day and age, in 2020, it's, differently, it's different than before because now you you really do have to take advantage of every opportunity that's presented to you as an artist because you just never know. You just never yeah. know. Before, in the 90s, A&Rs and stuff was going out. They was out and about looking for for artists to sign, you know, they was they was hanging around the studios, you know, they was at the parties, you know, they was cool, they was chopping it up with the DJs and stuff like that. They was hanging out on the street corners and stuff like that because they were like, "Shoot, it's some dope artists out there. It's my job to go get them." You know what I'm nah, saying? Now they just waiting on you to pop online, basically. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Imagine if it was like in 1997, bro, I'd be, bro, if. You know, all the open mics, I done done at least over 2,000 open mics. <laughs> I done been on the mic over 2,000 times just up here in the East Coast alone. Imagine, bro, just, if they was out looking for me. I can I can count, like, it's just the countless conversations I've had just with, with civilians, just regular fans, with this glow in their eyes. Like, bro, oh, man, you are phenomenal. Imagine if that was an A&R. Mm. But I, I, I believe in God, man. I believe that ever since I've been up here, it's been divine intervention. I've been through a lot of my life, just even as a kid, as a child, you know what I mean? Watching my mom go through certain things, um, you know, living in an obscure situation, bro. Like, I just don't quit. I just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just don't quit, man. I think, like Nipsey said, man, rest in peace, Nipsey. One thing. He said on the on Big Boy radio show that 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 forever gonna resonate with me. He was just like, you know, the only thing he was like, he went through, he went through every emotion. The only thing, you know, that that separate him, he just didn't quit. He he just didn't quit, bro. Yeah, we gonna go and cut it off, man, cause we already like an hour and a half. Man, we have, we always have good talks, man. That's why I be forgetting when we doing interviews, and we, it just it just I just be rambling at that at some point. But I know you are gonna edit it. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm she's going. 